Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to be talking about fonts, at least the basic fonts. There are a lot of different fonts that you can apply to your website. Today we're just going to talk about kind of the ones that come pre-installed, if you will. These are the default fonts. But don't worry, we're going to talk about the fun ones that you can import. So when you're setting fonts, there are a lot of different things that you can play with in order to make the fonts look exactly like you want. So over inside our styles.css, we're going to start messing with the fonts. The first thing you can do is to set the font family. So first let's select our paragraph, and then we want to set the font family. This is what you think of when you think of fonts. Now there are some very basic ones here, like cursive, fantasy, whatever, but you can actually just give specific fonts. So like, for instance, Arial. And refresh over here, and now my text is Arial. I can do Helvetica. Is that how you spell it? T-T-I-C-A, I think, maybe? Nope, doesn't look like it. The T I C A. There. I should have known when it didn't highlight orange. Now I have another font. So you've got a bunch of different options, but you also have, like I said, the basic ones. You could do sans serif. Oops, not sans sans serif, just sans serif. Refresh, and you'll notice that on a Mac, that defaults to Helvetica. So. But you could do also do serif, and that's something else. You could do cursive. I want to say it's cursive. Yep, cursive. Um, what was another one? Fantasy was another one. I don't know if that works. Yeah, it does. Look. So these are kind of the built-in ones. Do we have veranda on a Mac? Nope, doesn't look like it. So there's a relatively easy way to see what fonts you should use. It's cssfontstack.com. It has a listing of a bunch of the different types of fonts and what percentage of computers, both Windows and Mac, have those fonts installed. So for example, Arial, you've got a pretty safe bet that everybody just about is going to have it installed. While there's others, Avant-Garde, that pretty much no one is going to have installed. And some of them are very skewed. For example, Calibri, most Windows do, most Macs don't. Helvetica, very few windows do, but every single Mac does, because that's kind of Apple's copyrighted font. Impact, none of the windows do, but almost all the Macs do. So just keep that in mind. These are some of the, the basic fonts that come pre-installed on the computers. And what's going to happen is if you're... When you try and load this, so when I tried to load Veranda, you'll notice nothing really happened. It didn't actually do anything. It didn't change the font at all. So even if I had nothing, and then I put in Veranda. It doesn't change anything because my computer is basically saying, hey, your, your CSS is telling me to load Veranda, but I don't have that. So I'm just going to do nothing and stick with the basic. So what you could do is you can put multiple fonts. So you can put Veranda, and then you could put, um, I don't know, Helvetica, and then you could put Sans Serif. And what it'll do is it'll start here. If you have that one, it'll do that one. If not, it'll go to that one. If not, it'll go to that one. And everybody has a sans serif or a serif. So let's refresh. Do I have to put commas? I do have to put commas. Like I said, I'm not a CSS pro. Um, I have to look some of the, a lot of this stuff up. So you put commas in between each one. I apologize. So I could have edited that out, but again, troubleshooting and debugging is part of the process. So it checks to see if I have Veranda, and if I was on a different computer that did have Veranda, it would load that. But if it doesn't, it'll do Helvetica, and if I didn't have that, it'll go back down to Sans Serif. So if I come in here and just put a bunch of crap in there and try and load it, it'll go to Sans Serif, which again on a Mac is Helvetica. So let's say I did Veranda, and then... Noia, whatever the... Oops, I have to put that in quotes because it's two words. There's the that one, and then it just went to serif because it didn't have either of those. So that's how you can set the font family, and that's just the font. I'm going to leave that as Helvetica because I like it. The next item you can set, the next attribute, is font size, which is exactly like you think it is. You can set it to, say, 20 pixels. If I could type and refresh, and now it's bigger. You can set it to 10 pixels and refresh, now it's tiny. I think default is 16. Yeah, default is 16. 
I use pixels right there, but there are a lot of different sizes and, that you could use. Um, the most common are pixels, EM, and REM. So an EM and REM are the two that are most commonly used when you're talking about um, responsive design, like making your web page load and look good on all kinds of devices, whether it's a computer or whether it's a tablet or a cell phone or whatever. Um, these two both scale down or up based on their parent. EM will scale down and up based on their direct parent, and REM will scale down and up and down based on the root item, the root font size, like the HTML elements font size. To give you an example of this, let's come over here, and right here we're just going to put a span class equals bigger around this constructor word. So this word right here is the one we're modifying. So let's go to bigger, set the font size to 2EM, and let's set the font size on that P to 16 pixels. What's going to happen is this is now twice as large as this, because it's 2EM. You could do 2.4 to make it 2.4 times as large, so on and so forth. And as I change this, if I change this to four, which is absolutely tiny, you'll notice that that's also very tiny. It's set to an eight. So that's one way that you can make these responsive. Make that bigger. And then if I used REM, save and refresh, it looks the same. If I change this to 12, You'll notice this does not resize. This stays the same even though this got smaller because this is REM which is relative to the, the base, the default, not its parent. So REM is relative to the root element, that HTML element. Next item we have on our list is the font weight. The font weight is basically the boldness of the font. So you can set it to bold. So now all of my text will be bold. Or if I delete it and just apply that to here, font weight, bold, it just does it to that word. Now there are other options in bold. You can set numbers, numbers from 100 up through 800, I believe. I want to say it's 800. Does it go up to 800? 900, it looks like. So refresh, and it looks like I don't have the 900 installed. And this means this will come up later when we start installing custom fonts. You can pick the weights. Um, it looks like we still don't have the 800 weight installed. It's still defaulting to bold. To bold. 700, 500 maybe? There, now it's back 300. Let's see if we have the light. Yep, so it's getting thinner and thinner and thinner. And you have to set this in multiples of 100. You can't do like 150 or 220 or something like that. It's all multiples of 100. So you can see there are words, but there's also numbers if you want to get more specific. And that's what the font weight does. We'll leave that bold. Actually, let's, leave, let's, let's put it at 700. There, now it's bold, but it's a specific type of bold. Next item is line height. And what this will do is this will change the spacing between from one, from one line to the next. This, unless we're going to put this on the P instead of the bigger one. Line height. And the way I think about this is kind of like double spacing in an essay. So if I did it to set it to two, it would double space everything. See how that's that's double spaced? This one's a little bit bigger here because of the, the font size is being increased. So let's just go ahead and comment that out so we can see it refresh. So that's now double spaced. You can triple space it if you need to. You can go into 1.2. You can even go 0 0.1 and it's going to all cram on top of each other. Looks like something out of Cthulhu. So 0.8 will make it real close together so you can play around with the line heights to get what you want out of there. I like 1.7 personally. I think that's a good thing but everyone has their own. Then you've got text align. What text align will do is it will control how the element justifies text within itself. Now, this is an important thing to note. There is, let's pull this up and we can see it. Oops. You see that this 
element, this P element, is a block level element. It goes all the way left and right. So when you justify text and you text a line within yourself, it's going to justify that text within itself. So if I text a line right and refresh, come on, do your thing. There we go. Typo again, got me. So text a line right, it pushes it over to the right within itself. If I text a line center, it'll center the text in there. But let's say, real quick, we haven't talked about this yet, but let's set the width to 500 pixels. Now that item, that element, only goes over to here, so it centers it within itself. It does not center this on the page. That's important to keep in mind. Text align does not center on the page. It centers it within itself. All the text within this element is centered to the like this, or, or right justified. By default, it's left. You don't have to put text align left. It does that by default, so you only need to add text align if you want to overwrite it. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is text decoration. Text decoration has a few different things. You can see them actually popped up right here, line through, overline, and underline. This is a way for you to, let's do line through, and refresh, and now they're all crossed out. You underline, which does exactly what you think it does, and you can do overline, which again does exactly what you think it does. Now it lines on top. Yay! And that's really all that text decoration does. So in this video we talked about a variety of different ways to play with fonts. We talked about how to set your font and how you can set multiple fonts, like something like that. We talked about how to set your font size and the difference between pixels, EMs, and REM. Um, we talked about line height and how you can add space between your lines. We talked about how to align your text left, right, and center and how that aligns it only within itself, not within the page itself. And also talked about how to add text decorations such as underlines. If you have any questions, please let me know. We'll be happy to help. Thanks.